Found these spoons at a thrift store. I measured out just roughly how big I wanted it on my finger. Took some scissors and tried to cut it. Ended up bending it and it broke right where I had the little score marks from the scissors. Next to round it. I just use these pliers, but they have teeth on them. So I just took some cloth and I balled it up, rolled it up, and then wrapped it up with electrical tape so that it won't leave little marks. But anyway, so I bent it around, but I still had the burrs and the rough edge. So to fix that, I just took a fingernail file filed it nice and then I took this little bolt so I pounded it onto it first threw that rag down to protect it as I hammered it till it was nice and round. I don't know I feel like I need to roll my R's every time but I do. But then I took like a green scrubby like you'd use to wash dishes and it left some scratches but hopefully we can get that out with some uh, toothpaste. So with that I just smooshed it on there and rubbed it around and kind of buffed it with my little scrubbies the end of my fingers and I mean, you could still see a little bit of the scratches from the green uh, scrubby thing or to again I think I would just use the toothpaste how I put beads in my hair choose the color beads you want grab a section of hair and tie the rest out of the way get it really damp slash wet section it into three and start braiding it then hold two sections in your mouth while sliding the bead on the other piece repeat those two steps until you get to the bottom Get a hair elastic and tie the bottom of the braid. You can make this Luna Moth pot accessory out of some polymer clay. To make it, I just rolled out some clay and cut it to the shape of a moth. I used this little tool from Dollar Tree to add some texture and I made sure to add its iconic white fuzzy body. I was able to stick it to a piece of clay hanging over the edge of a pot and I actually baked it on the pot. Once it was cooled, I painted on some final details and I love how it turned out. Be sure to like and follow for more DIYs. You're more than enough. Ain't no way that I make it without you. I'm best, but I need you. I live off your love. I'll be hopeless and broken, no clue where I'm going If you ever gave up on us But you won't cause you gave us your son All I gave you was reasons to run But you love me regardless of all of the sin I committed You say what I've done How do you do it? Yesterday, I made matching ice tie-dye bucket hats for me, my husband, and our daughter, Izzy. I had to let the ice melt overnight, and I couldn't believe how gorgeous the colors melted in. I carefully took out each hat and rinsed it under cool water. Before I show you the results, make sure you hit that follow button to join our family. Here are the final results. These look amazing. We tried them all on as a family, and Izzy looks so cute. Comment below what I should tie-dye next. Today, I'm making matching ice tie-dye bucket hats for me, my husband, and our daughter, Izzy. First, I rinsed the bucket hats under cool water. Next, I got a huge bowl of ice and a vase to make my ice tie-dye parfait. First, I added in ice, then I added in the tie-dye. I'm going with a mix of blue, pink, and purple. Then, I added in the first bucket hat, layered more ice, and added more tie-dye, switching up the colors. I'm so excited to wear these as a family this summer and really hope they come out good. I kept repeating the process until I put the final bucket hat in, covered it with ice, and put all of my colors on top. This looks so pretty and it has to melt overnight, so make sure to come back to see the results. How to make tiny books. My template is in my bio. Find covers on Amazon, screenshot, and crop. Upload covers and template to Iva's Paint, adjust if necessary. Search manga panels underscore 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 official art. Print and cut everything. Fold panels accordion style and glue them together. I'm watching every stand up comedy. Just hoping that it will rub off on me. So you smile at everything. Cut off the corners and fold along the lines. Cut out these templates on cardstock and glue them in. Your smiling like a candlelight. 
finally glue in the panels. Target Snail gets an upgrade. Concept Sketch. Zooby Zooby Zoo. Zooby Zooby Zoo. Gather materials. Zooby Zooby Weather the shiny zoo, baby. Zooby Zoo. Want to kill so do. Make Mossy. Zooby Zooby Zoo. Zooby Zooby Zoo. large blanket. This one is so soft and I love the variety of happy colors on it. Place it on a flat surface and fold it in half. Grab a glue gun and glue together the longest tie. You can even sew the edge with some thread and a needle or use fabric glue. Stick the top layer down while the glue is still hot and wait for a minute or two to cool down and seal the two fabric layers together. Take some older pillows and carefully cut them open. Grab the fluffy stuffing and put it inside your DIY giant pillow. When you're happy with your ginormous pillow, glue the side with some hot glue. 
Ta-da! This is so comfy! You can totally stop here, I mean it already looks so pretty, but I decided to use this lovely pom-pom garland to decorate the pillow edges. You can use your pillow at home or have it on the balcony or in the garden. It is also perfect if you have sleepovers with your friends or movie nights. Without a doubt, this giant pillow will bring so much joy, so grab an old blanket and have a ton of fun crafting. Hi, I'm Lisa, and I'm going to show you how to make your own recycled paper. Start with any paper you want to get rid of, fold homework or straight, and rip it up into tiny pieces. Add water and let it soak overnight. The next day, you can blend it until you get your pulp. Add your pulp to a container of water and stir until you get consistency somewhat like this. Get your mold and deckle. This is what's going to shape your paper. Dip it into a container and lift up straight. Let most of the water drip out and then carefully lift up your frame. Transfer it to a cloth and press in firmly. Sponge up as much water as you can and then very slowly lift up your screen. Transfer your cloth to a hard surface and bring your stack of paper to your drying area. Hang it up and the next morning it will be dry and ready to be peeled off like so. This is extremely satisfying and my favorite part. It then just needs to be pressed and I use this handmade book press a friend made me and let it sit for a day or two. But a stack of books works just as fine. And there you have it, your very own handmade recycled paper. Thank you for watching and let me know if you try it. Today I am making plantable flower paper. So first I am making paper pull from old paper and then adding some coffee for the color. Then adding the pulp to a container of water and scooping it up with a mold and deco. The ones I use are from an Etsy shop called Wild Plant Paper and this one is great because it's not only a cute size, it also makes two cards with the effort of one. I love it. I will link them in my bio if you're interested. I sprinkle some daisy seeds on the wet pulp then transfer the mold to some cotton fabric. Squeeze out excess water, remove the frame, and stack it up. Once it's dry, I can peel off the cards. Then write whatever you want on them, put them in some soil, add some water, and hope it will grow some daisies. So I got this base and some wire. Let's make a sculpture. I'm gonna make a moon from Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's start with this skeleton because what else would we start with? Then I'll brush the surface with some liquid clay so my super sculpy ultralight sticks. And I'm gonna sit here for a good 17 minutes and condition this clay by squishing it in my fingertips until it's soft enough to use. My fingers hurt. After icing my carpal tunnel, I'm gonna start shaping out the underlying structure like this, and then I'm gonna bake it so that it gets hard, and then I'm gonna put my final layer of clay on top of it. This is Super Sculpey Original. And then let's make him a little shoe, like that, stick that on, and then, of course, he's got tons of ruffles, so let's just knock these things out. I made these out of cos clay, because cos clay stays flexible after you bake it, and I don't have to worry about them breaking. And the last thing I want is these things to break after I spent all that time on them. Now let's throw some buttons on, these are fun because they're easy. Now let's start that face. Let's punch out those eye sockets. All right, not sure if this is good yet, but whatever. Let's keep going. Let's make those cheeks, the ones on his face. Finish off his eyes. And then let's pan off the screen. And let's do that again. And let's not forget those neck ruffles. Thought I was done with ruffles. Now let's see what he looks like with his head on. Cross our fingers, he looks good. Okay, now let's move on to that hat. Boom, hat. After baking him, I'm going to start making his arms, and I baked him so that I don't smash the body while I work on his arms, because that would suck. Now let's throw on some little annoying, I mean, robot details, and poke in his last finger, because those didn't take forever, and then can't forget these little ribbon things. Okay, cool. Now we're going to bake him, and once he's baked, it's time for paint. I'm using acrylic paints, because those work the best on polymer clay. Let's get all that gray on first. Nice medium tone gray. Now his pants are covered in yellow stars, so I'm gonna paint them yellow first and then paint the negative space with navy blue. And don't forget, you can use a blow dryer in between coats. Let's get that yellow on and start those stars. These took forever, but they came out good, so I'm glad I took my time. Let's start filling in that negative space. 
Hmm, so much negative space. Now let's finish off the, the details, the ruffles, and all the little things everywhere. And his face. Now let's finish off his hat before I lose my mind and paint those ruffles. Oh, sorry. And as a final touch, I'm adding some metallic white to the surface to make it look like metal. Well, it doesn't actually look like metal, but it gets the point across. And he's done. I hope you enjoyed this process of me making Moon from Five Nights at Freddy's. Check out my YouTube channel for more. Bet you won't. Bye. Me, no sun is shining. string art tutorial. Got the piece of wood from Michaels, you'll also need some wire nails, a piece of paper, a hammer, and string. You can make whatever design you want. I'm doing a shamrock for St. Patrick's Day, and then start hammering in nails on the outline of your cutout. Make your way around the entirety of the cutout, hammering in nails about a half of inch apart. Here's what mine look like. Tie your string in a knot and attach it to any nail of your choice. And then that's it. Just make your way around to the nails, creating whatever design you want to make. Working your way back and forth multiple times so it's nice and filled in. And here's the final product. I'm getting around to finally decorating our shelves and I want to show you how I made this faux oil painting. On cardstock, I'm printing some of my favorite Etsy downloads. We're going to trim everything down to our frame size. After doing so, I'm using Mod Podge to glue the back of the cardstock onto the foam board. To get it to look like an oil painting, we're going to be brushing on the Mod Podge in circular motions. You're going to want about two coats and let dry in between. Once completely dry, you can trim it back to size. Finally, we can put it back into the frame and here's how the texture looks like. Now you have some inexpensive oil painting dupes. Here's another way to make a full oil painting using freezer paper. This one's gonna blow your mind. Cut out a template using letter sized paper. Next, we're going to need fabric and I'm recycling an old bed sheet. It's perfect because it's nice and thin. After you trim your fabric, we're going to lay down the freezer paper claw side up and apply the fabric with a hot iron. If you haven't guessed it, we're mimicking an image transfer using our home printer. And yes, we're printing on fabric. Next, we're going to peel it off the freezer paper, trim, and use Mod Podge to glue it. Next, apply it to a foam board and using Mod Podge, we're going to give it an oil technique look. After drying, we're going to trim out the foam board and place it in back into the frames. If you look a little closer, it looks like real canvas and brush strokes. Let me know which technique you like better.
I back it up? Is it fat enough? When I throw it back, is it fast enough? If I speed it up, can you hit it back? You ain't ready for this work now. Watch me throw it, throw it back, throw it back. Today, we're making a tabletop greenhouse out of these thrifted picture frames. I'm gonna start by removing all of the mat board and the glass, and then remove any stickers and mounting hardware. We want bare wood. The frames were pretty beat up and different colors, so I'm giving them a sand to remove the finish. And I'm securing the frames together by screwing in corner brackets and finishing the seam with a wood bonding epoxy that I sanded down after it dried. Now, trust the process here. I'm layering an undercoat, finishing with the dark tones and a clear coat to bring this dark wood to life. Then I attach the hardware for the door pole. To reattach the glass, I used marine grade silicone and pinned each corner with epoxy. This was a long process to make sure all the glass stayed in place. And then I painted the trim of the glass. And it may not be the coolest new greenhouse cabinet that everyone else has, but I like to think it's pretty cool to use the things that I do have to make something that's one of a kind. <laughs> Voldemort, Voldemort, ooh, Voldy, Voldy, Voldy. Voldemort, Voldemort, ooh, Voldy, Voldy, Voldy. Voldemort, Voldemort, ooh, Voldy, 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 Voldemort. <laughs>